Okay, good morning. Welcome. My name is Gary Grimm. I'll be your moderator. Today's forum is being brought to you by the Narc's Pen Initiative, registered 501-3C nonprofit corporation. Special thanks to DMS Properties and David Serini for sponsoring today's forum and providing us with the use of his facility here at the Placita. Said that right? Yep. Okay. We will be planning our 2005 winter and spring forum schedule next month. So if you have any special topics that you would like to have presented to the community, here is your chance. Each forum with associated costs runs us around $300 to produce. So if you have a topic and the $300, or a sponsor for your $300, your idea can be presented to the board for approval. There will be five forums running from January through May and you just need to contact me after the forum today. Also, at the front table, for all those interested, uh, we have a sign-in sheet, and please, we do hope to have you sign in so we can contact you with other events. And if you wish to participate, there's also a sheet out there for you to sign in for us to contact you if you want to participate on the board. On December 18, 2004, we'll be holding our combination of Christmas party and forum. The topic of the forum will be parenting. The forum is being coordinated by a former director and member, Reverend Phyllis Glover Abdul. We expect to have treats and entertainment for the children, along with experts in the field that will address the topic of parenting here in Norris County. Today's topic is Norris County's economic development. We are here at the Blazita, which I would describe as a small business incubator and a mini-mall. We are witnessing a grassroots business revival brought about by local business people with vision, determination, and energy. Our hope by public discussion of what is going on here, the same message can be carried to the rest of the community, <coughs> along with the input from our panelists. We also hope that our panelists will benefit as well from the interaction with you in the audience and the other panelists. A larger hope is that what comes out of today's forum will help pave the way to economic and business development here in town and entice more businesses and shoppers here. Okay, for the invited panelists today, we had originally invited Russ Bono, Chief of Police. He could not make it, but he is supposed to be sending a representative. So unfortunately, he's not here yet at this time. Right now. Sorry. <coughs> and possibly here he comes. Okay. And are you here? Obviously, I'm not Chief Bono, but I'm here for him because he's out of town. Okay, fine. Well, no, you're up. You're at the table. Okay. Okay. Your name is Michael Sergeant Michael Crescitelli. Okay. Uh, he is here representing North Town Police Department. Uh, also, we have Hank Cisco. He's to my right. Is that that he needs to be introduced? He is chairman of the International Police Association Youth Commission. Region 16, that's a state level organization. We also invited Ken Hughes, the planning director from Montgomery County. Unfortunately, he also could not make it today. Uh, Jane Massoni was also invited from the planning department of Nardstown. Unfortunately, she said she had a conflict. Next, we have David Serini, president of the WW, excuse me, WMMA, West Marshall Merchants Association. And our guest speaker today, Jerry Stump, from the Governor's Office of Housing and Community Revitalization. Did I say that right? You're right. Thank okay, you. very good. Now, addressing our forum procedurally, we have. Also, Mark. Oh, we have another oh I'm sorry, yes. Um, thank you. I was looking right over at you. We have Barbara Boyer. She is here, um, Pennsylvania Downtown Center, which is uh, the Eastern Regional Program Services Coordinator, and I'm sure she'll explain to you what exactly that is, I don't know. Addressing our forum procedurally, we have specific ground rules. Each person in the audience is allowed to ask one question or make a statement for our panelists and the rest of the audience. No questions or statements that are argumentative will be allowed, and that will be determined by sole discretion. If we run out of first-time questions, and hopefully that won't happen, a second question may also be asked. There is no interaction back and forth from the panelists. The idea is that everyone will benefit from the question and the answer posed 
by the balance board. We don't have any one person monopolize the meeting here today. We only have an hour and a half. This will be over at 12 o'clock. Start at 10.30. So away we go. Okay? You're our first speaker. Lord Jesus. Coming first? Well, <coughs> well I, I just... To be on the panel here uh, to talk about Marchdown, I guess I'd have to think back what March Street used to be. Uh, we had a walk and beat. Police officer had a walk. <coughs> had a call box on the corner of Markley, Marshall, the ring. Call box, walk up, Marshall, Stanbridge. Ball box and a recorded city ball would let you know that he would walk up and down every hour, one hour here, one hour down there. We had businesses uh, on Marshall Street. I would do traffic at the corner of Marshall and George Street from 6.30 to 9 for traffic, pedestrian traffic across. That's how many people were going back and forth, shopping, visiting, restaurants, and uh, that was Marshtown back in the 50s. And so today, we have a lot of people, we have a lot of stores here, but something's missing. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know whether we have people with the interest in Marstown, maybe because most of the successful people that were successful in Marstown moved out of town. And we're successful because we're still in Marstown. I don't know. Uh, things were different. When I was a policeman in Marstown, you had to live in Marstown. You had to live here. Your kids went to school here. You shop stores in Norristown. We would make sure that we want to protect the stores in our neighborhood because that's where we would have to go shop. And if that store would close down, it would be a problem. Now, I, I'm not against uh, policemen not living in Norristown, but I think there has to be something a little closer, maybe you want to live out of town, but your heart should be right here in Norristown. I'm not, not condemning the police, but maybe that's the way the situation is. When you don't live in a town, you don't have that 100% feeling. When your kids go to the school district. You care about the schools. You want to make sure the schools are safe. They're doing the right thing. That's not a police problem. The problem here in Norristown is not the police. The police is not the problem. A lot of people complain about police, but it's not their problem. It's a problem that the people themselves, they have to take an interest in the community. And we have a, a language barrier. We have quite a few people from different countries that are here, and there's no, there's no uh, communication. We make recommendations, and I think, uh, to communicate. And I think the police department, one of the key ones would be public relations Communicate, and I, I've already talked to the chief in reference to getting Hispanic-speaking police officers. I don't mean someone that studied language for a course or two. I'm talking about the customs and to know how to speak. I know myself when I was a policeman, and there was a down the east end of Marsh, down quite a few Italians, and there was an argument, and there was pounding and screaming, and you have some other police officers, Irish, Polish, you have all different types. And they would be hollering and screaming. I would come to the scene. Hey, who are you? Who are you? Oh, everybody calm down. It's something with you, your, your, your good bodies, you know what I mean? So it, I, I would recommend to any police officer, anybody in the public office, we have a council of them, to learn another language so you can communicate. That's what it's all about. So I, uh, I think that there were schools, but schools have met the challenge. I talked to school superintendents. They've hired more teachers to, or the language barrier, or Hispanic-speaking teachers. So we have to meet the challenge. 
and that's where we are today. But there's a lot more to be said, but I'll pass it on to the next. Before, before we move on to the next, I, I forgot to mention that we do have uh, a store here that is providing the, uh, just say, our food this morning, our breakfast, or a little brunch or whatever. Uh, it's called Algo Dolce, uh, something sweet. And they have about a dozen different types of cakes, uh, Mexican coffee, uh, cream milk cake, and just had some delicious. Um, some canned treats and flan, which is a Mexican dessert. Uh, but what we'll do is uh, maybe during our break, I'll let uh, somebody from the store tell you a little bit more about it. In the meantime, feel free to go over, see the person in the store, don't help yourself. They have a display there. And um, so just see the person in the store and they'll let you have whatever you want. It's all free of charge today, all the attendees. Thank you. Uh, moving on next to uh, uh, who wants to go next? Uh, David. Cheers. First of all, I would like to recognize the fact again that Olivia Brady's here. Um, she's a councilwoman that does get involved, and uh, she does come out and support these forums and support us up here on West Marshall. Thanks a lot, Olivia. And also from Jackie Trahala's office, she's a state representative. Her chief of staff is here, Jimmy Stewart. And uh, Jackie has done some great things for us as well. She's always there to support what we're trying to do on West Marshall Street. So uh, thank you, Jimmy. And thank Jackie, of course, as well. Um, I look at NARS now. I look at Norristown and I, you know, for the past few years, I just I shake my head with, uh, you know, we have so many positive attributes here that, that can accommodate a rebirth. And you just wonder why we haven't taken off yet. You know, you look at the, uh, the, the great housing stock, it's very affordably priced. You look at the highway infrastructure that we have in place. You look at our close proximity to Philadelphia. You look at our public transportation system, which is great and our riverfront potential. For whatever reason, we just can't get off the ground. And uh, it's something that's hard for me to accept, but I'm gonna do all I can to do, do to uh, try to get things off the ground. Um, today I wanna talk about West Marshall Street's role um, in Narstown's comeback. Um, first of all, I would like to talk about private investment that has happened along West Marshall Street over the past couple of years. Uh, I'll, I'll just point out the, uh, the, the most notable facts. One is, you know, we've taken Aston's Hardware Store, I don't know how many people have remembered what that used to look like. It was a mess. The third floor was underutilized. We put seven art studios there. What we've done there is we've demonstrated the fact that artists are willing to come to an area like this, that the quality of life is a little bit, you know, on the border, and they're still willing to come here and rent studio space. I think that's great because we're getting people from the main line. They're bringing some energy here. They're shopping at our store. That was the first thing we did. We've also have rehabilitated multiple buildings along here, opening 37 new businesses. 37. That's, that's a lot of businesses. We actually have 100 storefronts along West Marshall Street. It's something that when you're just driving up and down, you don't realize, but they're there. A lot of boards have been taken off windows. We're trying to do things. Um, I want to just go through some of the new businesses that are opening, or are soon to be opening. Uh, the one that I'm really, really excited about is the Internet Cafe. That's going to open on the back half of this building on Chain Street. We have an entrepreneur that is opening this facility. It's about 1,000 square feet. His idea is to put 10 workstations in. They're going to be computers that are going to be high speed, speed interface. It's going to have cameras on them where people can do tele, uh, video teleconferences. There's a, a huge influx of Mexicans here. They can get on the computers. It's six dollars for a half hour. They can talk to their relatives back home, and they can see each other both ways. I think that's a great idea. They're going to offer, you know, pastries, coffee as well. Excellent. We also have the Algo Dulce that we just spoke of, which is doing a great business here. They also do uh, birthday cakes, uh, wedding cakes, and we'll allow them to talk about that a little bit further. And I believe that they're going to be looking for a storefront in the near future. We have various clothing stores. We have a portrait photographer, a flower store, a leather and boot store, a Mexican market down the street, uh, kids' toys, custom blankets and throws, and various other specialties. 
we're showing Narstan that people are willing to do business here, okay? They're willing to tolerate some of the bullcrap that we're dealing with. But one thing I get upset with is, and I, I got to say it because I'm in a raw mood today, I don't believe we're getting the support that we need to continue our efforts. I believe the administration, council, has to step up to the plate. It's very upsetting, though, to see one council person here today. It's very upsetting to say only two council people have ever set foot in this building, which I think is, like I said, is creating a whole dynamic for Lars now. And I do kind of take that as a slap in the face. I'll back down now if my soul comes. I'm sorry, I apologize. Oh. Uh, the West Mar Plazita was created as an incubator for new businesses. The idea was to give them an affordable space to try to get their businesses going and then to move them into a storefront on West Marshall Street. And that's exactly what you're seeing happening here. Um, one of the other things that we've done as private development is we've installed the closed circuit TVs, which have gotten a lot of press. We have 32 uh, TVs throughout, circuit cameras. In fact, there's one right here. So we can see everything that's going on in the area. And the whole theme is to try to make things safer. We're working on safer streets and cleaner streets. If you can't have clean and safe, you're not going to revitalize. I'm truly convinced by that. We've also gone, or we have also gone through the creation of the West Marshall Street Merchants Association, which I'm the president. We felt it was necessary to establish a cooperative alliance of the merchants along West Marshall Street to go for the same common goals. I want to mention some of our accomplishments to date which includes streetscape improvements. We got new trash cans out there, wrought iron trash cans. Uh, we put flower pots out this season. We have banners. The banners give a very inviting appearance. It makes it look, you know, inviting. People say, wow, this town must be coming around. And small things like that. We've thrown two successful harvest festivals. My wife was very instrumental in organizing these harvest festivals. What do the Harvest Festivals do for the merchants? What do they do for the community? It shows a sense of community. The day that we had the Harvest Festival, I would have never known I was in Narsdale. We had decent people on the streets. People were happy. They were smiling. They had kids. There was balloons. It was great. Once the Harvest Festival was over and it started getting dark, things changed a little bit and reality set back in. You're in Narsdale because the drug dealers took back over and the streets started getting crappy. But, you know, we're working on that. I look at some of our key challenges. Our key challenges are to retain the businesses that we already have. Hopefully we can help these businesses expand. We want to generate an appeal for new businesses. We need new businesses here. No doubt about it. Uh, we do have parking issues, which we're trying to address. We have problems with deliveries and, and double parking, but I think we can handle all these things. Our quality of life issues are just unbelievable sometimes. I was down here three weeks ago. Within 10 minutes, our fire alarm system got full. The kids ran outside. I had my wife go outside waiting for the police as I was trying to disable the system. She's outside. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. There's, there's school children passing. There's a guy out there. He whips it out in the middle of the street. I'm not even talking in an alley or somewhere where it's dark, where there's kids passing. He's making comments at the kids passing as he's taking a whiz on the building as my wife's watching Okay, I go out, outside as she calls for my help. I read the guy the riot act. He leaves and he comes back with a gang of guys telling me they're going to beat the crap out of This is not quality of life. This is not something that these people should have to deal with. Okay, we need help. We need police here. We need a beat police officer here. I know they're going through financial work. Again, this is not directed towards the police per se. They need help. They need more officers on the street. But this area will not okay go through a revival period if it's not safe um, my wife i would not let walk on these streets right now the way things are it's 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 totally um, it's it's appalling the way the streets are when you come in here you feel safe you almost think you know you're out of nars now um, but that same day i called 911 as these guys are approaching me and you know i did get a police officer from the north end but by the time he got here and again no disrespect it was a busy friday afternoon I would have been laying there in cold blood, and I had already called, you know, 10 minutes before. So these are the things that we're facing, and I get downright disgusted because of them. Uh, I want to talk about downtown revitalization. Give me a couple more minutes, Gary, and the importance of downtown 
okay? Because people say, why does West Marshall Street think that they're more important than Willow Street or another area? I'm going to tell you why. Because downtown revitalization is the economic development approach that redevelops commercial districts. And excuse me for reading off my sheet, but when I get this upset, my memory starts going. Based on their inherent assets, rich, rich architecture, small businesses, a connection with the past, a sense with, of place, this approach seeks not only developing the district as a successful marketplace, but also to make it the focus of community identity. We can't lose our identity. Downtown revitalization has the highest rate of return of any economic development program in the nation. An attractive and vibrant representation of the economic health, the institutional leadership, and general state of the entire community is created with the revitalization effort in the downtown areas. People travel through here, the outsiders. This is what they think of NARS now. They're not traveling the thousand block of Willow Street. And I'm not saying I don't want Willow Street to get better, but this economic growth will spread from the downtown section now. You have to start somewhere. My contention is you start here, you start on Main Street. You've got to make these areas appealing. More and more communities are realizing that downtown revitalization and reuse of historic structures is the best way to get a return out of their significant investments into the infrastructure. Sidewalks, streets, parking, lots, lights, drainage systems, etc. In addition, the community enjoys an enhanced quality of life, a renewed sense of community pride, as heart of the city is reclaimed. I sit in this building and I watch families come through. I feel great. I see sense of community. I see families, real people coming out shopping. It makes me feel great that I can be part of this. Every community is in competition. And this is what Narstown has to realize, because I'm starting to look to invest in other areas. Reading has great things to offer. Their mayor calls me. Their mayor wants me to go there and do the same thing I'm doing here, up there. And guess what? I'm starting to take a look at it. So Norristown better realize there's competition out there. Competition is for local company executives who call their own home, the, the town their own. The town reaps about $2,000 in property taxes and the consumer spending that accommodates an executive and high-paying position. Many times this is, decision is based on the area's perceived quality of life. Downtown is representative of the quality of life, so it must appeal to these prospective community members. Today, any local government that does not have a program of downtown revitalization and reuse of existing historic buildings cannot make the claim that it is doing everything possible to save taxpayers' money. I thank you. Okay, next we're going to move down to Barbara Boyer and she hopefully will tell us what the Pennsylvania Downtown Center Service Coordinator does. Um, thank you and thanks for inviting me today. The Pennsylvania Downtown Center is contracted by the Department of Community and Economic Development to administer the Main Street and Elm Street programs. My position, and it's brand new, I've been in your Commonwealth for a whole month now, uh, moving here from Colorado. My position goes out into communities that have the Main Street or Elm Street program to give them uh, technical support, training, to go out to communities like this and, and let you know what kinds of things are out there to help you. Uh, the Main Street program is very much in line with some of the things actually that, that Dave was talking about. It's a comprehensive community revitalization program. Um, it's been around for almost 25 years now. It was out of originally the National Trust for Historic Preservation. They wanted to save the old commercial buildings. And what they realized was that if you just go and fix up buildings and there's no tenant in them, they are going to deteriorate anyway. So they started looking at how do we help the whole downtown community revitalize itself and sustain those revitalization efforts. So it's a long-term process, and it is a process, not a project, the Main Street Program. Um, grassroots, it comes from people who are on the street, the people that own the property, the people that own and run the businesses, um, your governmental in entities, uh, your other organizations, whatever they might be, that are in the area, coming together, 
as a group with diverse opinions and desires and building consensus so that you wind up with a revitalized area that everyone feels they can live in, thrive in, and goes on long term. Um, basically, it's, it's broken down into four main areas of concentration, design, organization, promotion, and economic um, restructuring. Design is your clean and safe kind of area. Um, the physical aspects of your community. How does the street look? How is it lighted? Are people safe? Is trash picked up? Are there trash containers? What do the buildings look like? Do they need some facade improvements? Um, you know, that, that might be a coat of paint, or, or maybe it's something more major than that. Um, your promotions or your special events, be they some retail to drive people into the stores, or some kind of festival like you are mentioning this Harvest Festival, to showcase the community and, and bring people in to see what you have to offer them. Economic restructuring sounds like something um, would certainly be useful here as well, and that it is how do you help those businesses that are here thrive and expand, stay here and do better all the time, and also bring in new businesses to give yourselves the kind of mix that makes this attractive to people to come, not just to go to maybe one destination store, or maybe go in and see the artists that are now here. Um, and I presume they might have a gallery. Uh, but, uh, organization, the least sexy of, of the areas of focus, but it's literally how do you come together as a community, again, with a diverse culture, um, various ethnic groups. You've been here a long time. You've been here a year or two. Um, you all have different ideas. How does that group come together and create a vision for the whole community that you can all live with and then work together? How do you find more volunteers to help yourselves um, accomplish the tasks in front of you? Where do you find money to pay for this? Because it's never cheap. Um, and how do you create an organization that will be around 20 years from now when maybe you don't care so much? Maybe you've moved on um, and there are other people who come into the community and want to keep this effort going. Uh, so that's, that's the very big picture. What is extraordinary about the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to someone just moving here and I moved here from Colorado is that, that your government, your state government, has provided a variety of funding sources to help communities just like you do what needs to be done um, to build the downtown again and revitalize it and keep it going. And that is the Main Street program. There, there are other funding sources within that to help you with facades and, and the physical aspects. There's money from PennDOT for streetscapes. Um, there's an anchor building grant, for example, that's now up to a half a million dollars that will help with a white elephant building or a key building that needs help. Um, it's very premature for me to go into details, and at some point in time you may want to, um, if there's enough consensus of really looking at this, you may want us to come back and really get into the nitty gritty. It is not a quick fix, it's not a shot in the arm. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of planning, it takes a lot of energy. Um, but there is help there, that's a part of my job, and the Pennsylvania Downtown Center. Um, and again, the state is providing revenues that are extremely beneficial to you as a community. You do have to raise matching funds to, to various levels, depending on what the program is. In the Main Street program itself, it's $90,000 over five years. Uh, a very nominal amount. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but when you consider what, el what the financial benefits of technical training comes to you for that, um, you would be amazed at, at what that $90,000 is leveraging. It can go up to close to a million dollars. The Main Street program in Pennsylvania, um, in tracking statistics, for every dollar invested in the, by the community, there's a $10 return. Nationally, there, it's about 140, um, which I find absolutely amazing. But some other areas have done it as well as or better.
that's it in a nutshell. And you know, someday I'd be glad to come back and really get into.